It has been one year since my first video covering the X1 Carbon, and since then, a lot has happened. Bamboo Labs launched a massively successful Kickstarter, which they managed to fulfill in record timing, and surprised us all when they launched a more affordable version of the printer in December called the P1P. With other manufacturers releasing their current gen of 3D printers aimed to compete with the Bamboo Labs series of printers, I've gotten quite a few questions asking what my current thought is on the X1 Carbon. I did an update video on the X1 Carbon at two months and wanted to update that now that we are at that one year mark. The X1 Carbon I have here needs a new bed cable and it's actually not the original unit that I had last year, which we'll get into shortly. In today's video, we will repair this printer and do some maintenance as I bring you up to speed with what my experience has been like. We'll go over the good and bad along with how the printer has evolved since launch. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. Starting off, I want to cover how I've been using the X1 Carbon. When I originally got this printer, I figured I'd be using it for most of my general purpose 3D printing needs and multi-color printing. However, it's primarily been a dedicated ABS printer. This is by no means because this printer can't print with PLA or PTG beautifully, but more so that I have a lot of printers that are capable of printing with those filaments and printing with those filaments quite well. ABS or ASA on the other hand has always been a bit hit or miss for many of my i3 printers, partially because most of them aren't enclosed, but when printing them on the X1 Carbon, it's such a mindless process that in a lot of instances, it actually feels like cheating. Without exaggerating, I would say 95 of 100 ABS prints that have been sent off to the X1 Carbon have turned out great. For the five that would have had issues, a couple of those are probably my fault due to having oils on my fingers when touching the PEI bed, or just printing with very complex geometries that in reality need a bit more surface area. Some ABS projects I've done on the X1 are the Mercury 1.1, Lurge X, my belted Ender 3, the stealth burner upgrade for my switch wire, and the P1P enclosure to name a few. Let's start off with the positives that I've seen. First, which is a big one, is spare parts. This is especially important for these printers because just about everything is proprietary, requiring you to get them from Bamboo directly. Their web shop has a massive range of spare parts, both from standard consumables to a bit more obscure items in case you need them. On top of that, the prices are some of the absolute lowest I've ever seen from any manufacturer for spare parts. A fully assembled hot end with heater, thermistor, fan, and hardened nozzle is $35, which is less than just about any other hot end on the market. The prices are so good that we've begun to see remixing of tool heads to use the bamboo hardware. I've personally ordered extruder gears, hot ends, replacement carbon filter, some filament, and they've all shipped quickly from within the US. Next is updates and improvements made across the board from the printer's firmware to the Bamboo Studio Slicer and the Bamboo Handy app. Since the first official firmware release, version 1.0, there have been eight firmware updates to the printer, not including the six updates made to the AMS multi-filament unit. These releases have included everything from small bug fixes to quality of life improvements, such as maintenance reminders and job caching, to brand new requested features like land mode, which allows you to wirelessly connect and transfer files to your printer locally, bypassing the cloud server or filament drying mode. The Slicer has had 10 releases with the 11th being in public beta 2 at the time of recording. Many, including myself, had some concerns early on with the need to use the Bamboo Slicer to get the most out of the hardware on the printer. However, the Bamboo Studio Slicer is a damn good slicer, and the Orca Slicer fork of that slicer has become my daily driver not just for the X1 Carbon and the P1P, but for my Vorons as well as my Rat Rig V Minion. The slicer is based off of Prusa Slicer, which is based off of Slick 3R, so it is open source, and unlike many other manufacturers that just skin the slicer, Bamboo has added some very nice features. A few of my favorites are multiple plate objects, which is a lifesaver for organization when printing large projects, 
direct importing of step files, and hybrid supports. The Bamboo Handy app has also had more than 10 updates since its initial launch. With so many manufacturers quickly releasing a half-baked product with promises of improvements that get abandoned the second they decide to make a newer, shinier printer, it is really refreshing to see Bamboo Lab standing behind their printers and their products and constantly improving the ecosystem. Now let's look at some of the issues I've experienced. In my initial video of the X1 Carbon, I was pretty happy with the print quality and the results I was getting, but I did show that when printing with ABS, I was having some issues, specifically with gaps between the infill and the walls of the printed parts. This seemed to be more extreme with certain geometries, and in my communication with Bamboo, believed that it was something that could be resolved through firmware and slicer improvements. I showed this again at the two month update video, but believed I'd gotten it more under control with updates and some slight tweaking in the slicer, but it ended up taking a turn. In September, I went back and forth with the Bamboo Lab support team trying to diagnose this issue. They checked a bunch of things, including the LiDAR data, which I believed was the issue, before confirming with me that it looked perfectly normal from their end. The end result was them swapping out the machine. I sent that original unit back to their repair slash customer service facility in Texas, and they sent me this new unit here. I had requested an update on that printer if and when they had figured out what the issue was, more for my own curiosity, but I never ended up getting a final verdict. I do know of a few other customers that have also had their machines swapped out when the regular remote troubleshooting didn't solve the issue. The new X1 Carbon has been living in the garage on a sturdy muscle rack printing ABS and worked flawlessly for about 400 print hours. Then one day I noticed when I sent off a print that the bed threw an error. At that point I clicked retry and it was able to complete the print without any issues but it was the starting point of issues with the bed. At first it was every couple of prints but that quickly increased and it looked like it was something related to the thermistor on the bed so I went through the customer support portal and created a ticket. There is and has been a note in the portal for at least a month regarding increased times on tickets so I had a feeling it would be a bit before I heard back. It ended up taking four business days for the first reply to my ticket, and then subsequent replies were roughly one business day or 24 hours. I was pretty busy and ended up taking my sweet time when replying, but other than the first reply, which was definitely longer than I would have liked, the rest was a positive experience. I described the issue and then sent a photo of the printer with its serial number and the support ticket, and they diagnosed it as being a faulty bed cable. Doing a quick search around, this seems to be quite a common issue due to the routing of the cable and wear from repeat motion. For anyone that does want to prepare for this with minimal downtime, the cable is available for $4 in the Bamboo store. Bamboo shipped out a replacement cable and provided me with a $50 coupon to their US web store, which was certainly unexpected, but an appreciated gesture. Then it came time to actually replace the cable and boy, was it a lot of work. The process involves completely removing both the back and right panel, which holds close to 40 screws, heating up adhesive on cables, depinning a power cable, then reinstalling everything. If I had to describe the process, it was incredibly tedious, and honestly, I don't think somebody that's buying the X1 Carbon as a hands-off, ready-to-rock-and-roll machine is going to be up for the task of having to do something like that. There were instructions for the process that definitely helped, but they were far from perfect. There were a few case screws I didn't see called out, which resulted in a few of the tacked on threads coming loose. Some emergency JB Weld did the trick, but again, 40 screws in two hours roughly is not a fun experience. I'm thankful that it's something that the end user can even repair on their own, but I personally would love to see Bamboo Lab put some more thought into user serviceability on their next generation of printers. I also feel like some form of a service plan could be beneficial, especially for users that are buying these things for print farms or businesses. I can definitely see them being willing to pay a certain amount, so that way when there's an issue, they can quickly swap them out versus trying to service these units themselves. This doesn't excuse that Bamboo Labs also needs to ramp up their traditional or their regular customer service support, especially considering that that delay notice has been up for at least a month now. In their defense, I've had much worse customer service, but if they're trying to compete with a company like Prusa, then the after sales support is going to be incredibly important. The last thing I've not experienced directly, but I've heard enough about over the past few months are the nasty comments in the official communities. It's not Bamboo Lab's responsibility to moderate or police unofficial Bamboo groups, but a lot of what I've seen seems to be coming from the official Discord and the official Facebook group. For new users that are interested in these printers or current users looking for help or support, it is doing a major disservice to both the customer as well as the brand. 
I tend to believe in most instances it's a few loud bad apples, but it would be really nice to see this change so that both of these places can be used for support and learning. Replacing the signal cable from my bed did the trick and the printer is back in business just in time to print out some Voron mods. Looking at the past year, I feel like Bamboo Labs has been a net positive for the entire 3D printing space and community, and I'm recommending these printers daily. Yes, they are not a tinkerer's machine, and they do have their issues, but it's hard to beat the speed and performance that they're able to achieve. The company and products have come a long ways in just the past year, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they continue to innovate and what their next generation of machines looks like. Whether you are or are not a fan, there is no denying that Bamboo Labs has forced just about every 3D printer manufacturer to get off the sidelines where they've been comfortably resting for some time now. Whether it drives innovation or just cheaper imitations, these printers have raised the bar in a major way. And that has been one year with the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. I hope that I was able to answer the majority of your questions and give you a bit more insight to what my experience has been like with this printer. If you do have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. I also would love to know what your thoughts and feedback are, whether this is a printer that you're still looking at or considering, or you have one of these printers, let me know in the comments down below sort of what your experience has been like. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.